welcome back. We are currently on a seven night sailing to the Norwegian Fjords. Actually, today's our final day. And as we were packing, I thought I would do a quick packing video uh, just because I know I was kind of struggling to figure out what to pack for a Norway sailing and was having difficulty finding that information on YouTube and online um, and thought it would be helpful. Turns out it's very similar to packing for Alaska. <laughs> we do have an Alaska packing video, um, which we'll link to below. Um, but if you might be considering a Norwegian Fjords itinerary, um, you know, this might be of interest to you so you get an idea of what we packed. Our sailing is the very last sailing that they are doing um, of this particular season. It is the first week of September and it is starting to enter their winter period. So the weather was supposed to be in Norway, low 50s to uh, mid 60s. We also spent a few days in London beforehand, before the sailing, and the temperature there was supposed to be around 70 degrees or so. Um, we did our research on the weather before we arrived, and we're trying to figure out how to pack. Uh, turns out that both in London and in Norway, we were told we were very, very lucky multiple times because the weather has been exceptionally and unseasonably warm um, at this time of year. So temperatures in London were in excess of 75 degrees um, and very, very humid uh, during our time there during the last week of August. And the first week of September on this cruise, um, every port stop that we had in Norway, temperatures were um, at 70 degrees or above and it was sunny every single day. Um, what we've been told is typically it rains pretty much every single day, it's overcast and um, it can be definitely um, usually around 60 degrees or below. Sometimes colder if you're going to be doing a glacier hike or hiking up to Pulpit Rock if you're stopping in Stavanger, things like that. So with that, um, you know, when we packed for Alaska last year, I did not pack enough clothing and have to do laundry on the ship. I did not want to make the same mistake with this particular trip. So I did pack enough clothing this time. I did not have to do laundry on the ship. So um, I packed a few neutral colored long sleeve t-shirts to wear under cardigans, a few short sleeve t-shirts to pack um, to wear under cardigans. Um, I packed a few of the performance t-shirts to wear under some pieces for layering for our excursions. For pants, um, I only packed two pairs of jeans. I'm wearing one of them now. <laughs> Um, and another darker pair um, that I could wear in the evenings um, to dinner and a pair of khaki pants. And then for our excursions, uh, I packed three pairs of quick dry water resistant pants. These are very similar to the ones that I had packed for Alaska and those worked out really great um, on the hikes. For under those particular pants, I packed two pairs of leggings just for some extra warmth. Um, I also like the fact that the compression helped my legs not feel as tired as we were doing those active excursions. The one thing that I did very differently for this trip than for the Alaska trip is I packed my wool hiking and ski socks. Um, and I highly recommend doing this uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of active excursions in Norway because these kept my feet very comfortable, warm, and dry uh, during you know, three, four, five hour excursions. They're very thick and cushioned. Um, I brought my smart wool ones because these are what I use for hiking and skiing back home. Um, but the knee length ones, the day that we did the Brickstall Glacier hike in Olden were fantastic because um, they kept me very, very comfortable all day. Uh, the other thing I would also recommend is um, with the longer flight compression socks, um, will help your legs not feel as tired or if you're prone to swelling um, these will definitely help with that as well so um you know uh, regular socks underwear pajamas all that stuff i did pack a bathing suit um for knowing that we were going to be in london for a few days and it was going to be warmer um, i just packed a cup of few loose um, blouses to wear um, with the, you know, khakis or jeans, um, short sleeve, long sleeve, and then, um, just 
just a couple of neutral cardigans to wear with those. And then for our excursions, I use these for our Alaska trip as well as layering pieces, uh, fleeces, just to put on over kind of the performance t-shirts, uh, long sleeve or short sleeve. These worked out really great in Norway because the mornings, um, I generally wake up cold. <laughs> so before our bodies were warmed up from the excursions, um, it was nice to, to be warm and cozy um, in one of these and then have the option to um, take it off if I needed to, if I was feeling um, warm. But these are fairly um, lightweight. They actually packed fairly well um, and did keep me comfortable throughout the day. For formal wear, formal wear packing for a trip like this was a little bit daunting for me. Um, I was trying to figure out what I could possibly pack that would not get super wrinkled, knowing that we were going to be living out of a suitcase. Uh, for those of you that have traveled to uh, the UK before, you probably know that the hotel rooms are the size of a shoebox. We had a lot more luggage than we've had in the past, and so we knew we were kind of going to be living in limited space um, and living out of the suitcases for a while. Um, I actually found this dress at Kohl's. Um, it's fairly simple. It's got a little bit of a dazzling with sequins on there. It's not super expensive, but it's made out of this kind of like spandex polyester material. It did not wrinkle at all. Um, it was in a packing cube for almost five or six days uh, before we actually got on the ship to unpack in the closet, and it's barely unwrinkled. So I um, highly recommend <laughs> some type of synthetic material um, if you're looking for a dress to bring for the second formal night. I just packed dress pants um, and a blouse to wear with a cardigan. Um, it was simple. I noticed there's similarity to the Alaskan cruises where People aren't getting super, super dressed up in the gowns and things like you might see um, on some of the U.S. based cruises. For shoes, our formal night, um, I just packed a pair of, again, silver bedazzled sandals. Um, they're flats, not heels. I didn't want to have to pack too much luggage, but still wanted to be able to wear something somewhat fancy um, for formal nights. I did pack a pair of comfortable sandals. These are Dansko's. I do typically wear Burks, but um, I found these. They're very, very comfortable. There's no break-in period required, unlike the Birkenstocks. Um, highly recommend those. And then the plan was <laughs> to come over with uh, one pair of sneakers and a pair of waterproof hiking shoes. Uh, I did have a packing list, but you know how it is, um, all of you moms out there that are scrambling around, packing up your kids and taking care of the animals and all the final details. Uh, the packing list kind of failed me, or I failed myself this time because I forgot to pack my waterproof hiking shoes. I did not realize that I did that until we arrived at the hotel the night before our uh, flight. <laughs> and so too late to go back home and get them. Um, it would have been another five hour round trip car ride. So uh, we ended up passing on that and I ended up with two pairs of sneakers for the trip. I figured worst case, if one pair got wet, um, I'd have a day to let them dry out and be able to wear the other pair. Uh, but when we got to London, um, I was reading more about the glacier hike that we were going to be doing in Olden and realized that it really was going to be necessary for me to have a pair of waterproof shoes. And so we did a little bit of searching and found that there was a store in Covent Garden called Cotswold Outdoors. And <laughs> we, we made it a mission to go there and try to find me a pair of waterproof hiking shoes. Mission was a success. I found a pair of Keens. Um, these are not the typical style that I wear back home. Um, I usually do the Keen Tardy 2s, but these were very, very comfortable and uh, they were waterproof. They kept my feet dry, um, even though we were walking through streams and things um, on that hike. Uh, the one thing I will say is that that was a very costly mistake by not packing those shoes because in the UK, not only did I pay full price, um, things are more expensive over there, but we also pay 20% fat. And as US citizens, we are no longer eligible to apply for a refund of the VAT that we pay. 
there. Um, they're looking at reinstating that uh, tax refund program or that refund program in 2025. But um, these shoes not only cost me full price, they cost me full price plus um, 20%. So very, very costly mistake to forget those at home. <laughs> Um, but those were comfortable and they worked out really, really well. Um, for outerwear, I have two jackets. Um, one is a lightweight uh, packable jacket that I tend to wear during the winter. This one's an Arctrix. Um, it does fold in on itself and um, I can pack it into the hood. So very small form factor, um, great for wearing. And then on most days I would end up wearing uh, raincoat on top of it. This one is Vortex, also Arthrix, again, a must. Um, even if you skip on bringing a jacket, is a good quality raincoat. As we were told, um, the weather we've had this week is very, very unusual. Typically, it's raining um, quite heavily, we've been told, at this time of year. So having a good quality raincoat is essential. Um, and especially the day that we did the hike to the glacier, just Anytime you're going near a waterfall, you have like kind of a water spraying on you and stuff, so this will keep you dry. Um, but this, you know, layered over this worked out fantastically. Um, for other accessories, um, hat and gloves. I didn't really end up using the gloves. Um, it really wasn't very, very cold per se. I did use the hat quite a bit because it was windy. Um, and then a couple of the excursions we did, um, one of them was on a boat. We were on the second deck. And when the boat was going kind of fast, um, this was great for kind of keeping the head warm um, as the wind was blowing um, pretty fast. Um, and then also during the glacier hike, morning started off kind of cold and as we kind of got into higher elevations, uh, the temperature was dropping. So hat was very helpful for that. Um, other accessories, this is a Lightweight travel backpack. This one is water resistant. Um, I bought it off of Amazon. It was not super expensive, but it's packable, small form factor, easy to throw into the suitcase. I didn't use this for anything heavy duty. I basically just pack snacks and water and things like that for our son in here. My husband has a Patagonia uh, waterproof dry bag, which he packed most of the uh, camera equipment and things like that um, that were we were bringing on the excursion with us in. Um, other things. We brought some extra ponchos. Uh, we learned in Alaska that even the highest quality raincoats are not completely waterproof, even if they're vortex. Um, if it rains uh, frequently enough and hard enough, uh, even the water will get through those. Uh, so the ponchos we packed just because, again, they don't take up a lot of space, they're super light, and it's an easy way of just throwing another waterproof layer on top of what you already have on um, if you do run into a bit of rain. Uh, I did pack Neosporin and uh, some band-aids and blister packs uh, just in case with, if you have many active <laughs> excursions. Um, if you do happen to get blisters on your feet, uh, just having those blister cushions, just blister band-aids um, can be helpful. Um, because of the weather, uh, we had heard that it was helpful to pack hand warmers and toe warmers. Um, again, we ski during the winter uh, where we live in New Hampshire, so um, it was easy to just grab a few of these and throw them. They're not super heavy, but to throw them in our suitcase, we didn't end up using them, but um, if it had been cold, it would have been helpful to have. Um, I usually do pack some instant cold packs. Um, these, during the hot weather excursions that we do, come in handy for me because I do have trouble regulating body temperature. So these help cool me down instantly. Um, but on this particular sailing, um, I thought they would be a good idea to have just given the type of excursions we were doing. Um, if someone slipped and fell, you know, got a boo-boo. Um, having a nice pack is great for injuries. Um, and the real MVP of this trip for me were these Thermacare heat patches. Um, I love these. I would put them on before bedtime and wake up in the morning like nice and loose and relaxed. Um, they were fantastic. I typically don't like being in the hot tubs on the cruise ships when they're super crowded. Um, I did bring a bathing suit but I didn't end up getting in the hot tubs at all. Um, so you know that would be a great way of kind of loosening up tight muscles and things like that. Um, I didn't go to the spa and get a massage or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but these worked out 
nicely for me. Um, so those are also lightweight, kind of easy to just throw into your suitcase, a couple of those um, to have on hand. And then a couple of other things is a battery pack. We found that with all the pictures that we're taking with our phones and video, there's so, so, so much beautiful scenery around. Uh, we were running out of battery, um, so having an external battery pack was great. Um, I don't like the tangle of cables that comes with having the external battery pack or having to deal with things. I found on Amazon these um, octopus cables with the chargers. It's retractable, um, and I love that because you can their small form factor. Um, and then for a watch charger. Uh, just got this one and you can just plug the cable in there so that actually allowed me to downsize my kit that I normally pack with all of the cables and the chargers and things like that um, the one thing that I will note is uh, if you are going to be spending a few days in London before doing an itinerary like this um, if it departs from Southampton um, the international chargers that we bought <laughs> that have worked everywhere else uh, do not necessarily work. So the ones that we bought for the ship have the two prongs, the European chargers. Those will not work. Um, at least they didn't work at the hotel that we stayed at, which was the Hilton, Hampton by Hilton Waterloo. Um, we needed the actual chargers they use in England, which they have like the smiley faces everywhere. Um, so we'll post a link to those um, below. But I think that is most everything. Um, we will post a link to some of these items in the description below. Also post um, a link to the Alaska packing video, um, which has some of these products that we used um, in the past and reused for this particular sailing there. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.